Good morning. Um, so, just a couple of things that I want to say as a result of hearing what was going on this morning. Um, I worked for 25 years for the American Medical Association, the first eight of which was for the American Medical Political Action Committee. AMPAC it was called. It was the first political action committee that was not a union political action committee. So I'm very familiar with the PAC and how important it is and why it's important to contribute to the political action committee. And you don't contribute because you're buying a legislator. You contribute because you want good government just like anybody else. And you want to you want equal access and fairness. So good for you, and I'm glad the PACs uh, have survived, and people are still through associations contributing politically as well as contributing individually. Um, also, I, I'm a native of Fort Pierce, and I grew up there. Went to all local schools, and when I was in high school. I'm going to date myself, but you know, you can't hide your age anyway. Um, they started talking about this place that was going to be uh, where the Peacock Ranch used to be. And it was going to be south of us, and it was going to be a place called Port St. Lucie, and it was going to be created out of ranch land. And um, we all thought nobody would ever move there because there's no beach. So boy, were we wrong. Because when I came back, from Chicago, uh, where I had a career for 25 years. Lo and behold, there is a growing and a wonderful city of Port St. Lucie, south of Fort Pierce. So um, I acknowledge that we have a city that's south of us, that's the ninth largest city in the um, state and is four times larger than Fort Pierce. So, and I don't believe that Fort Pierce competes with Port St. Lucie because every city in Florida has its own unique character. And uh, Fort Pierce has its unique character. It was, um, for many of you, I, I'm assuming we don't have a lot of Florida natives here or Fort Pierce natives. Oh, well, we have some. Okay, great. So, uh, if you know your history, uh, Fort Pierce was uh, incorporated in 1901. That was before the St. Lucie County, which was incorporated in 1905. Fort Pierce is an old city by Florida standards. And it was, has been settled several times. Originally, it was settled with the Indian River Colony, which is along the Treasure Coast, Indian River County, St. Lucie County, and Martin County, which did not exist then. It was called Santa Lucia County, and it was the Indian River Colony. You could get uh, free land if you would settle and uh, work the land, and you would, you would protect it from Indians, from, which were then Seminole Indians. And um, that colony was... Um, uh, spread throughout the three counties, lived along the Indian River, and some of our names in um, St. Lucie County come from the people who settled there, like Peck's Lake, if you've heard of Peck's Lake. There was a man named Samuel Peck who was in the Indian River Colony. Um, there was uh, Herman's, Herman's Bay, that was a man who settled in the Indian River Colony. Those people dispersed in 1850 because of what was considered an Indian uprising. It wasn't much of an uprising, really. It, it's kind of set off the Third Seminole War, which wasn't much of a war and really shouldn't have happened. But um, after that war, the Indian, the Seminole Indians melted into the Everglades, and so the, the area of Fort Pierce was very sparsely settled. And uh, the, during the Civil War, there was a sparse settlement, and many of the people uh, fought on both sides because Florida isn't much of a southern state. If, you, if you're a native of Florida, you know it's never been one or the other. It's been, uh, and especially in Key West. Key West was a wide open city. Um, there was there was no slavery in Key West. There was no color line. There was no. It was a wide open city, and um, uh, and many of the people who lived in the Indian River Colony who did not want to fight in the Civil War for either side went to Key West and stayed there uh, until the war was over. Then the settlers, some of the settlers came back in, an, in the late 1880s and 1890s. And in 1894, the railroad came to Fort Pierce, Flagler's Railroad. 
and it's the one you love to hate now, but at once, at one time, it was a very positive force because it brought settlers and it brought workers down on the railroad. And um, then Fort Pierce began to grow. And um, fast forward to World War II, and we had the U.S. Uh, frogmen trained on South Beach in Fort Pierce. Uh, they lived on South Beach and they trained on North Beach. And um, if you were a civilian, you couldn't get on either island without a pass. And so it was very much a wartime city, and many people forget that. Um, my parents came to Fort Pierce in, um, they came twice because they got married in the Depression and they followed work wherever they could find work. So they came to Fort Pierce and worked for International Harvester and then um, moved to North Carolina and then moved back. So I'm the only one, I'm the youngest of six and I'm the only one born in Florida. And everybody else was born in some other state because my parents traveled around trying to make sure that they could feed their growing family. So um, if you're selling real estate in Fort Pierce, we have a lot of history. We have a lot of history. And um, we're, uh, we have a lot, we have older infrastructure and that sometimes causes us problems because it's hard to keep up. So we've always had these beautiful beaches and we've always had this, the ocean access. We have the safest inlet and we have the inlet that's closest between the ocean and uh, the port and the mainland. And um, we have, the inlet is 28 feet deep and so we're trying to develop our port and trying to attract a niche um, a business for our port because it's a small port and uh, we have a the governor is very very interested in um, developing the ports and he would love to give us some money we just have to get our act together and we also have private we have private property at our port which makes it difficult to get state grants so we have it has to be a creative way to attract business so we have this great climate, and we have people playing golf, and they love to fish. We were known for fishing. We were, uh, in the turn of the last century, we had a senator come to Fort Pierce named Matthew Stanley Quays from Pennsylvania. He was a very powerful senator. And he thought this was the most wonderful place in the world, and he, he was called the third senator of Florida because he promoted Fort Pierce, and he promoted the fishing, and they brought his powerful friends down from Pennsylvania all of whom were in the machine and corrupt, but never mind. And, and they came down, they had their own railroad, railroad stop in St. Lucie Village. And um, they came down and uh, he, he built a grand house uh, at St. Lucie Village and he brought all his political friends down there and used the locals to take them fishing and hunting and uh, do all of the kinds of things that Actually, you may not know it, but Florida has always attracted people from the north to come down. And we've always had seasonal visitors, and we've always had people come down here for their health. Many, uh, many physicians would send families down and say, go to Florida, go to Arizona for your health, for your tubercular or whatever. So th this isn't anything new. It's uh, having uh, snowbirds is nothing new. Um, so. Fast forward to now and talk about what's new in Fort Pierce. Well, the Jetty Park, many of you have seen the Jetty Park, which as a, as a child I would swim swiftly. And uh, it's a wonderful, beautiful park. It was always beautiful because it's where the ocean meets the inlet. You know, what's not to like about that? However, we put amenities there now. So we put amenities there for the fishermen, we put swings there for um, the just park goers, we put, um, we put the history there of the Navy SEALs, that they're now called SEALs, they were called frog men. So, um, and then around that is, has uh, grown the little business district of the Inlet Grill, the Hurricane, um, the, the Jetty Lounge was always there. <laughs> it was always what it is today. Um, so, the, um, there is a new establishment going up there called the Square Grouper. You might be familiar with the one in Jupiter. It's the same man who's building it. Came up to Fort Pierce, like what we did with the streets in the South Beach, and um, is now building uh, another one. And he's he's uh, he's really 
gotten involved in the community, one of the things that we did recently was we, uh, as, a, as a citizens, we contributed money to an effort to give our police department two ATVs, all-terrain vehicles that are especially equipped for the policemen, and it's, they're going to be our uh, police vehicles on the beach and in that entertainment area, which is um, something that our new police chief asked for, and we raised the money in about two months. So it was a it was a great a great we had the presentation the other night at the uh, commission meeting. Uh, we're building a new fishing pier at Melody Lane um, near Joanne, <laughs> and uh, we're um, that will be finished in November. Um, it will it it is what they call state of the art. But you know always say state of the art. Look out for your pocketbook. But um, <laughs> it is going to be uh, uh, very uh, a nice amenity for downtown, it, it's kind of between the St. Andrews Episcopal Academy and the Renaissance Building. Um, that was done with a lot of different grants. We, it, one of the things that, since I've been mayor at Fort Pierce, we've not had any money, so it's easy to be mayor when you don't have money because you just say no all the time. No, no, no. So what, so what we did was, we put together some grants from different um, organizations and um, and building not only the Melody Lane Fishing here, but we're also improving Veterans Memorial Park, which is down where the Riverwalk Center is, where um, we're going to have, um, this is going to be a, when it's three phases. Also, we put together six organizations and six grants. So uh, it's going to clean the water, it's going to honor the veterans, it's going to just be a beautiful place at the Riverwalk Center. And uh, many of you might know that down behind the Riverwalk Center, along the river, is a statue of Cece Ross Lyles. Cece Ross Lyles was on Flight 93, and she was from Fort Pierce. She was a former Fort Pierce police officer, and uh, was one of the people that created the situation so that the plane would crash and not hit the Capitol. So she is our connection. <laughs> That. Um, so, other parks we've improved are J.C. Park, Causeway Park, Vigorales Park, and we have all these little small beach parks. We have pristine beaches and we have uncrowded beaches, and that is priceless for many people who come from other parts of Florida especially. And we have the Inlet Linear Park, which is connected to the Jetty Park. I walk that Inlet Park a lot, and uh, I see a lot of people there enjoying the Inlet and enjoying the walk and walking their dogs. It's just a great little neighborhood. Um, also, Marina Square, where we have a lot of public events downtown, is uh, very popular now. Um, I'm on the board of the Farmer's Market. It's every Saturday, rain or shine, voted the number one market in Florida and number three in the nation. Great market. Creek Linear Park, which is um, uh, goes from 7th Street to 15th Street, and uh, that is also a project that was cobbled together with grants, and with, that's the Tidal Creek, and so we're in in that creek. In that uh, the project is also a water cleaning. Um, it has a system so that the, the when the water goes into the lagoon it will not be uh, polluted. And we're continuing with that. It, many people don't realize that the Morris Creek Park, it just looks pretty now, but we also put in a system to help clean the water because we, we know how important that is. We've also done another uh, Indian Hills Recreation Area, which is behind, which is off Savannah Road. Um, and it is a, a lake and a park, and the lake is going to clean the water before it goes into the lagoon and it's going to connect to the south park, so there's going to be a whole trail from um, further south than Midway Road all the way up to Savannah Road. For um, So that's going to be a beautiful park, and it's also going to be cleaning the water, which is a great thing. We're developing the new King Power Plant site, the old King Power, the, the HD King Power Plant is uh, at North Creek and um, Avenue C. And um, that property is a beautiful piece of property. We're cleaning it up so that it is um, residential approved, so it doesn't have any uh, 
anything toxic on it anymore, and we were going to be um, hoping that we can attract development for that particular piece of property that will really help downtown Port Piers. Um, in North 2nd Street, where the port is, we're going to be improving North 2nd Street, the Fort Piers Utilities Authority and the Florida Department of Transportation. So when that street is developed with infrastructure and with uh, utilities and all the, the bells and whistles, we hope that then Pete's going to bring us a great developer to come and help develop the port. So um, we restored the new our marina, which was destroyed after the hurricanes in 2004. It took us 10 years. We have a special island system. Woo! So the island is in the, the river, which old time Fort Pierce doesn't like, but um, we'll protect the waterfront and we'll protect the boats at the marina. We've added docks to the marina and the marina is now full. Uh, so uh, that's a good thing. Um, St. Andrew's Academy. Um, Downtown school has been there for a while. They've added a high school, and um, they're doing some very innovative things there. And they are um, the, the kids eat downtown in downtown Fort Pierce instead of having they don't have a cafeteria there, so they get vouchers. They go downtown. They can go to any restaurant they want. Um, the kids also have uh, in Fort Pierce uh, yacht, uh, sailing club is teaching them how to sail. Art Mondo is teaching art classes. Sunrise Theater is teaching drama. I mean, they're, they're a downtown school, and they're dedicated to downtown Fort Pierce, and there's a lot of uh, interconnection between the students of, say, and the parents and the teachers at St. Andrews and downtown Fort Pierce, which is great for both institutions. We have the Fort Pierce uh, Authentic Tours, which is uh, eco-tourism in Fort Pierce, so you can ride horses on the beach, or you can kayak, or you can do all kinds of outdoor things. And that is an organization that has really taken off. And you'd be surprised, maybe you wouldn't, I was surprised with how many people come to Fort Pierce, come to St. Lucie County for the outdoor activities, not just fishing and golf, but for active outdoor um, activities. So, of course, you know about the Sunrise Theater and you, the Zora Neale Hurston Trail, with the county just turned that over to Fort Pierce, so we're going to be uh, maintaining that, as well as we're going to have a new uh, trail for the highwaymen, the highwaymen painters. Everybody know who the highwaymen are? Right? So, great, uh, great uh, period piece uh, painters of, um, I remember uh, growing up in Fort Pierce, uh, just seen the painters on the side of the road selling their paintings, or they would go from business to business selling their paintings. Um, when I got married in Fort Pierce in 1969, my father and mother gave me a highwayman painting. They couldn't afford a Beanie Bacchus, so they gave me a highwayman. <laughs> <laughs> and now, it, that probably is much more valuable than what they paid for it then. So, um, a, a group, it, with that, we're going to have a festival, highwayman festival, in February for the highwayman. And, try to have that on an annual basis. Of course, you know about Beanie Bacchus, our famous landscape artist, and um, the Bacchus Gallery is a, an institution in Fort Pierce. Lawnwood Regional Medical Center, trauma, level two trauma center, pediatric and cardiatric, great hospital, didn't used to have a good reputation, now has an excellent reputation. So, and Indian River State College, we're very proud of that college. That college is a wonderful institution for helping feed uh, workers into the local workforce. I'm a graduate of Indian River, I was called Indian River Junior College then. It had one building, and, um, it, but now it's grown and it's a great institution and really is part of Fort Pierce. So I think that um, on the horizon uh, for Fort Pierce, we have a chance, of course we have good schools already, uh, Lincoln Park Academy, we have Fort Pierce Central, both A schools, Francis K. Sweet and A school, all in Fort Pierce. So, uh, but I think that with a new superintendent and a new dedication from all of us, we're going to have better schools in St. Lucie County. And um, uh, on the issue of crime, which is always the elephant in the room that nobody likes to talk about, but um, I will tell you that um, we have a new police chief who is absolutely dedicated to turning this around. And uh, the police force is uh, is going to be um, 
much improved, I think, with her leadership, and she's starting a number of community efforts to reach out to the community. The crime in Fort Pierce is concentrated in two uh, census tracts, and it is uh, a very small area, and it is mostly contained in that area. So that when you have potential buyers who have Googled Fort Pierce, they go, oh, I'm not going to go there. So it is a very, very concentrated, small area. Fort Pierce is a safe place to live. It's not if you're in a gang. And so um, that's something that we have to overcome and we have to work hard at. And we are doing that right now. Actually, I sit on the, the executive roundtable. And um, the roundtable is concentrating on the Lincoln Park neighborhood and working with youth there. And there's a lot of very uh, dedicated people in this county at the top of their organization, St. Lucie County Sheriff, both police departments, the Department of Juvenile Justice, the um, state attorney, the U.S. attorney, the FBI, that we have brought to bear on this problem their attention and their earnest effort to um, to reach children before they get to this uh, possibility and to get rid of the bad ones. And um, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I back our new police chief totally, 100%. She comes from Tampa and she um, policed an area in Tampa very much like Fort Pierce. She knows what she's doing. She's brought a couple of people over from Tampa. So believe me, it's a new day in Fort Pierce. and. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna turn this around. I know bad news hangs around longer than good news, but we're gonna try very hard to turn this around because it's really not fair. Thank you. So I'll, I'll close with just saying that our Fort Pierce Utilities Authority. I sit on that board. We've brought the rates down uh, since I've been on the board. Uh, Four dollars uh, the first year. Three dollars earlier this year for the PCA, another dollar the other day. We're bringing those rates down, and um, we're also partnering. We have good collaboration with St. Lucie County, with the City of Port St. Lucie, with the EDC. Uh, it's, I think it's a new day in this county. We're all getting along. The old, the old days of people, people's egos getting in the way of getting the job done are behind us, I believe, and because uh, I think when you fight with the county and you fight with, what you, when you fight with another jurisdiction, the taxpayer loses. So I'm not in it to fight. So uh, uh, we're all collaborating and we're all supporting each other. And um, actually, Mayor Orbeck and I have um, actually uh, really reached an understanding, not that we needed to, but we're both kind of in it to help each other and to help the county. We both don't see our jurisdictions as the only one that we need to work for. I'd like to work as hard for Port St. Lucie, and he's very committed to Fort Pierce. He understands we're all in this together, so um, I'm his warm-up act. I think I see him out there, so um, I'll close with that and say thank you very much for having me.